And then today we're going to talk about ghost apps. So I'm going to go ahead and get my screen ready for you. All right. And then if you could just do a reaction um, just so that I know. And there we go. I appreciate that. So um, we are going to be talking about the dangers of ghost apps and how they can impact your children. And so the topics that we're going to cover today, we're going to just talk about what are ghost apps. You might not know what ghost apps are. And I, I want to do a quick poll since we're here. And I want to know if you've heard of ghost apps before. So let me go ahead and type that in. All right, so the poll is live. Do you know what ghost apps are? Yes or no? And um, Ashley put in the chat that she has and would love to learn more. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what parents and caregivers should know, some best practices to mitigate risks and resources and guides. So you'll have to get your smartphones out so that you can scan the QR code if you have an Apple or a Google Android device. All right, so looking at the poll, it's uh, split. So some say yes and some said no. So let me tell you what ghost apps um, are. It's basically a, a app that's designed to hide or disguise something. And they're intentionally created to invade detection. Sometimes it could be concealed with other applications. Sometimes it has it in hidden folders. These apps, they're commonly found on the Apple um, Play, the Apple um, App Store and the Google Play Store. So you have different types of ghost apps. Um, the video to the right that's playing is a screen grab of my phone with a calculator app. It's designed to be a calculator. However, if you enter the secret code, which I put one, two, three, four, it actually takes me to a hidden vault where I can upload images and screenshots and a whole bunch more. But also there's a web browser to where I can actually search the web and go on the internet without it being detected. Ashley, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm already on the floor. I'm already on the floor. This is a calculator app that can browse the internet and send messages. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, yes, yes. Karen, school board member, um, Karen Perez, I see your hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. So the vault allows you, you're going like really fast. I see it. So the vault allows um, whoever is using this app to hide albums, notes. From, I'm, I'm trying to catch that every time they, they, they it goes through. Um, notes, anything, um, files. It, it's just different. It, so it has a whole subcategory under this app. That is correct. Wow. Okay. That is correct. So it's notes, files, passwords, contacts. Um, like I said, the most, most of the time that this app is being used is to store explicit content, screenshots, um, or just things that people want to hide. Like you have to intentionally download this app to intentionally hide something. So this app is made to deceive. It's made to go through steps to find something. So... Um, that's the calculator app. Now, um, that's just one of the apps that I showed you that's on my phone, but there are, there are so many more. Okay. This is a screen grab of another app that's different than what I have. This is calculator with the, um, hash symbol. And then if you look to your right, you can see related apps that they have that are available on the marketplace. You can literally go to the Apple store and see all of these different apps that are free to download. 
Okay. This particular app that I'm showing you is ranked 116 in utilities, meaning that they have so many downloads of this particular app. Now, although there are a lot of Apple users in the United States, we do have a lot of Android users as well. So the Google Play Store has more options for apps by different developers. And so I, again, I'm showing you millions of downloads, different apps that have that same type of function where they function as a calculator. But when you enter that code, you can hide all sorts of things in inside. Okay, there's another type of ghost app and it's called a vault or secret folder. And the video that you see to your right is just me on the Apple store searching for Volt and just look at all of the apps that are available for you to hide information. And so there are even decoy passwords and fake login screens that these apps even have. So this app that I'm going to show you here, if I can click on it, there we go. So this is available on iPhone. If, if someone enters the wrong code, it will snap a photo using the front-facing camera. That's one of the features of this app. So say this was downloaded on you know, your child's phone and you was like, oh, well, let me see what this app is. And you put the pin code. Your child is going to know because it's going to have a picture of you looking into this phone. And it's also going to have a timestamp of when you did it. I see your hand, Ashley. I'm just, my mouth has not closed from the beginning of this presentation. And my concern or question is, so this app is downloadable for the iPhone, but my concern is my child doesn't have an iPhone. However, they have an iPad. So is it downloadable to the iPad devices as well? That is a great question. Absolutely. Most of the devices um, and most of the apps are able to be downloaded on the iPad an iPod, and an iPhone, an iMac. Um, their Apple Store is for a multitude of different um, apps. So check the App Store and, and see. Um, you will probably see some of these same apps that I'm highlighting. So that, that would be something that I would want you to explore and report back and let me know what your findings are. All right. And, and then back to, to Android, right? Talking about Android, because there's, again, so many different apps that are available. This is one of their highlighted apps to hide and just keep things out of your gallery role, right? So what parents and caregivers should know is that the main two things that this app does it conceals explicit photos and videos. Some of these app developers are storing child pornography. We see a rise of sexting and sextortion and all of those sex-related cyber crimes that's happening. And children have been storing said photos and screenshots using one of these vaults secret calculators and all of these different apps that are available for free that they can download. Also the hidden browser. So there are some parents that implement different firewalls to where children cannot have access to certain websites. Well, when you have a browser within a particular app, sometimes those firewall and filters don't necessarily cross over. So meaning that you will have to really examine what your child has access to, particularly when you have these apps that are set up to bypass and hide and conceal information. And so if anything, check the cell phone. So um, mitigating risks. Just setting clear expectations. If you've given your child a device, you need to know exactly 
what's on the device. Every single app, you need to go through every single app to see what it is. Because some of these apps that are downloaded on the phone, regardless if they're free or not, some of them are harmful, particularly the ones that are free. You got to check the free ones too. Also, using the parental controls, I have resources that I, I want you to scan and go to the website. They're directly from the source. You're getting it right from Apple. You're getting it right from Google. You're not even getting it from me. You're getting it from them. There are ways to protect your device to make sure that your children are not downloading anything without your knowledge or consent. It would require a pin code for them to download certain games and apps and whatnot. The controls and the instructions on how to set it up is directly from Apple and is directly from Google. And so I'm going to make sure that you have those QR codes and links so that you can set that up. Um, also, having an education about online safety I understand that there might be just a handful of people in the room, but this is something serious where everyone needs to understand how dangerous this is. So this is why I'm recording it so that this can be shared and disseminated and it can be applied so other people can understand that these apps are dangerous and that you have to be intentional with what is on your child's device. And the last thing is practicing what you preach. OK, so if, if you have your cell phone and you are on your phone all day, every day, there is no way that you can tell your child that they're spending too much time on their device. So we can't have selective outrage and participation when it comes down to practicing and curating safe social spaces. Charging the room, um, charging the phone in the room. Children should not be charging their phone in their room. Why? Because when you're asleep. Most of the time, they're on their device. So there needs to be family stations where the, the phones are charged up. Y'all are going to have to create your own rules and boundaries and how that's going to work. Going back to setting clear guidelines and expectations. Okay. So if you have an Apple device, I'm going to uh, put the link in the chat, but also, the QR code is there for you to scan. It takes you right to Apple. So you're able to see yourself how to set the parental controls up. Nice. Okay. I'm going to give that a couple of moments. Make sure I copy and paste the link correctly in the chat. All right, and then this is for Google Play. So this is the link for Google Play if you have an Android device on how to set up parental controls in Google Play. And the link is there. I see your hand, Ashley. Really quick, I just want to thank you for this. Um, I'm just thinking with my teacher brain, is there a resource that Teaching for the Culture or you, Bianca, can provide that can be a checklist for elementary, middle school, or high school students to know whether an app is a good or a bad app? I love this idea, and I think that that is something that we can create and get that sent out for parents. Absolutely. Thank and you. I'm saying that because I think about TikTok and Facebook and how parents are allowing their students to use this app. And maybe if we had that guideline, just like you have the, the poster that to tells you how to wash your hands, maybe if we had that guideline about apps and what is a good app or what is a potentially dangerous app to give to parents, it would be helpful. Absolutely. I love that idea. And I think that we can definitely make that happen because the terms of service on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok is 13 years or older. So let's start there. We have children in elementary school that have these platforms and have these apps, but the terms of service say that it's supposed to be for 13 and up. So we, we got to start there. So I, I, I love that. And so the ending of this slide is just, Protecting our children by checking the cell phone. I can't stress it enough. 
I am working on a complete build out on checkthecellphone.com, which will be full of resources and links to um, different ways that you can protect your children online and to foster these conversations because the stuff that our children have access to is very dangerous and we need all hands on deck to fix it. So I thank you, school board member um, Perez, for allowing me to have this opportunity to present that. And I will yield the rest of the meeting to you. Thank you. Thank you for always, you know, being there and protecting our children um, and parents. You know, um, um, Bianca, are you going to be um, posting this so that we could all everyone that was on this conversation can put it up online on our Facebook or what? How are you going to provide it? Yeah, so it's currently recording. So my intention was to go ahead and clip the presentation part of the meeting and share it on social media. And also, since we got a new mailing list for the Cyber Task Force, I'm also yeah. going to send it to the people so that they, they can also um, see it as well. Fantastic. Okay. Um, and um, next month, we're going to be, um, you know, our, this is our continuation of always protecting our children and you know making sure their online activity is always safe and secure but of course you know we could only provide the ed edification um, it's incumbent on the parents to make sure that they um, do what they need to do to keep their their children safe um, you know we'll help but you know you, parents you need to do your part um, thank you bianca thank you for making sure that, you know, we're good and, and everybody's doing what they need to do 